There are a lot of people online claiming that the Tyson Fury Alexander Usyk undisputed fight is a locked in done deal for early 2023. Unfortunately, this is completely untrue. What we do know is that Usyk's team have come out and said that everything is agreed and done on their side. They've basically agreed with Fury's people in principle to the terms. That's the way I interpret it. But it's now down to Tyson Fury to actually sign, agree on a date, and go ahead with things. Now, obviously, Tyson Fury's got his trilogy fight with Derek Chisora coming up. Is he superstitious? Is he someone who doesn't want to put pen to paper for a future fight until he's got the fight in front of him out of the way, even if it's against someone who is an overwhelming favorite to beat, who is already beaten twice before? Maybe. Who knows? Some fighters are like that, okay? But with regards to the people saying the fight is a done deal, it is not a done deal. How many times have we been in this situation before? where one side say they've agreed to the terms and they've signed their contract, they're just waiting for the other guy to do it, and the fight doesn't end up happening. Isn't that what happened in 2021 with Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury, where Anthony Joshua said everything's signed, it's all done from our side, and then literally a day or two before, Tyson Fury said that he was going to sign the contract, then all of a sudden, the Wilder arbitration result comes out and Fury can't go ahead with the fight. And how long before that announcement was made, did Fury and his team know that they wouldn't be able to go ahead with the fight? That's the question. So it's never a done deal until both sides have signed and there's been some type of formal announcement. And even then, of course, people can pull out of fights. We know that. But in terms of being able to say the fight is a done deal, no, both guys have to sign. We've seen countless instances where only one guy has signed, only one side has agreed, and then the fight doesn't happen. So let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Let's actually deal with the facts. So anyway, that's the state of play at the moment. Now, the interesting thing is that Klimas, the manager of Alexander Usyk, said that the Fury fight can happen no earlier than February 18th, 2023, and no later than March 4th. That's a curiously narrow time window within which the fight needs to happen. Why are they giving it such a narrow time window? If we have a look at the calendar here, you got February 18th, followed by February 25th, and then March 4th. So three weekends upon which the fight can happen according to Klimas. Why not extend it out a bit further than that? Why does it need to be one of these three weekends? Is it a matter of Usyk and his team trying to dictate to Tyson Fury because Usyk has three belts, Tyson Fury only has one? Is it a case of them Again, trying to give Tyson Fury a taste of his own medicine because Fury likes to dictate. Fury likes to set deadlines. Is that Usyk and his team trying to set Tyson Fury some deadlines? Again, giving him a taste of his own medicine. Or is this something which has actually been agreed in principle by Fury and his team? As in, Klimas, et cetera, have spoken to Bob Arum and Frank Warren and they've said, look, these are the dates we're looking at, 18th, 25th, or March 4th. And maybe Team Fury are perfectly cool with that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And the only reason I raise this is because I get anxious when I see situations or you know, things that crop up which could potentially jeopardize a fight. And this is a fight that I desperately want to see. I don't want anything to get in the way. I don't want there to be any issue where somebody doesn't like these three dates Someone wants a date a week after, a week before, or a month later. I don't want to hear or see anything like that. <laughs> I want us to get this fight. As soon as Tyson Fury is done with Chisora, and look, it is heavyweight boxing. Anything can happen, quote unquote. And sometimes it does. But this is as close as you're ever going to get to a routine, sure shot victory with Tyson Fury versus Derek Chisora in the trilogy fight. If Derek Chisora was to pull, it up, pull off an upset here, this would be absolutely extraordinary. Maybe the odds wouldn't be as wide. I, I'm not sure what the odds are, but for example, the biggest upset in heavyweight history to this day in terms of odds was Buster Douglas beating Mike Tyson, who it was something like 42 to 1. I'm not sure if they're going to be that wide here with Tyson Fury and Derek Chisora. They might be, but... To me, it would be an even bigger upset because of the fact that Tyson Fury's already beat Chisora comfortably twice. So to get beaten by a guy who you've already beaten twice, and remember, Fury right now is at his prime or close to his prime. You know, some would argue that 
He's either a bit past it or perhaps he hasn't reached it quite yet. Right? But he's there or thereabouts. Derek Chisora, on the other hand, is way past his prime. This is not a peaking fighter at all. That's why it would be an absolutely extraordinary thing if Derek Chisora managed to beat the Gypsy King. So I'm not anticipating that happening. I'm expecting Tyson Fury to come through without any real issues at all and hopefully then have this undisputed unification showdown with Alexander Usyk. So uh, yeah, let's hope nothing gets in the way of it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you're tired of the biased narratives and mass censorship on mainstream platforms and you want to be part of a community of critical thinkers who love free speech just as much as you do, then come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship-free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide variety of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct. But that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&As, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalog of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got an element group where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. Unlike Discord, it has full end-to-end -end encryption, it's decentralized, and it's 100% censorship free. You can also send voice notes as well as much larger audio and video files than you can on Discord. So come and sign up on Patreon. There's no contract, there's no commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. So I'll see you over there. I'm out.